All right, this is going to be kind of your intro video to the first project. Now, you've gotten this, this sheet in class, or if you haven't already gotten it, you will get it soon. And I want to just talk about the expectations so that you know exactly what to do for this project. So when you look at this paper, and please read this carefully, I'm just going to highlight it, you'll notice that we have two things. We have one, two, right? That means you're turning in two different documents to me, one of them being an Excel spreadsheet and one of them being a typed reflection paper. So that would be like in Microsoft Word. Now, you don't have to use Excel in Word. You can be using Google Docs and, you know, Google Sheets. But if you do that, make sure you save them as appropriate documents so that I can actually uh, open them. So if you do it in Google Docs, make sure you save it as a Word document. And if you do it in Google Sheets, make sure you save it as an Excel spreadsheet so that I can open it um, when I go to do the grading. So first, uh, let's talk about the Excel document. Now, when you look under number one here, you see there are five, actually six boxes. Think of each of those boxes. This is like a checklist. I'm going to look for those six items when I, when I grade this, and each one of them will have points attached to it. So as you're working through this, when you complete, when, when you put your name, course name, and project name on the Excel spreadsheet, check it off. You want to make sure each one of those boxes is checked before you turn it in. Now, when we work in Excel, you want to use cell references, and this is crucial because I will be checking this when I grade it. So just bringing up a quick Excel document. Um, you know, I'm going to find averages here, and I'm going to do this pretty quickly. So this is not me teaching you how to do this. This is me using an example. So I found this, the averages for both of these. Now, if I want to move this average up to this box, I need to do that with a cell reference. So I can hit equals, always start with an equal sign, and I click the button I want to move. Enter. It simply moves the number over. Now, I'm going to do the same thing for cell B10, equals B10, enter. And it's done that. So now if I want to multiply these two columns, equals, I can hit this, use my snowflake, which is shift 8, multiply them together, gives me a number. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to multiply them together, and there are shortcuts, but I'm going to do this the long way. I'm going to add those two columns together. All right, so I have now done a bunch of different things in Excel. Then I go back and I say, oh my gosh, this 45 should be a 100. If I go back and change that cell, notice how A10 G2 and G4 all automatically change when I change the number. This is why you use cell references, so that as you change one number, everything else filters through. So it's very, very important. When you turn in your document, I'm going to go to your Excel document, and I'm going to change a bunch of numbers just to see how it's affected and make sure that you're using cell references. You get points for that. So please make sure that you're using appropriate cell references. And if you need help with that, you can email me your Excel document and I will guide you, or you can ask questions in class or come to Open Lab, any of those options. Just make sure in Excel you're using cell references. So when I click on these cells, you can see up here in this page that it says, you know, that uses the cell references. That's what I mean. That's what I want. Okay. So that's the Excel document. Make sure you hit all of these important items. Now, down when you get to the typed reflection paper, again, please make sure you put your name, your course name, the project name. Project one is fine. And then each one of these boxes is a checklist, right? So there's, for the written paper, there are seven boxes. Make sure each one. I would think that for your write-up, you will have at least seven paragraphs. I would say you would want one paragraph per box. Now, that paragraph doesn't have to be eight sentences or whatever your English people tell you about paragraphs. I need you to accurately and descriptively answer the questions. If you can do that in two sentences, then do it in two sentences. If it takes you 12 sentences, take 12 sentences. I don't care. I want you to accurately and descriptively answer the questions. Now when I say descriptively, I mean if you read this here and it says, well, you know, what, what is the impact on the score if the student received perfect on all scores on the quizzes, your answer should not be, it goes up. What does that mean? You need to pretend that the person grading this has no idea what you mean. So your first sentence might be, um, if the student received perfect on, all, on the scores of all quizzes, you know, the average score goes up, and then you, you want to quantify that. So how much does it go up? Does it go up by three percentage points, five percentage points? What? Descriptive. You want people to read it and understand. I shouldn't have to go to this document and read the questions to figure out what you're trying to answer. If you don't specifically say it in your paper, you're not going to get credit for it. So make sure you are descriptive in your write-up.
all right? You almost want to restate the question that you're answering before you actually answer it. That is a good rule of thumb when working on these, okay? So be very, very specific. All right, so each one of these boxes make it a paragraph. That's a good rule of thumb. It'll keep you organized, and then you'll make sure you hit everything. Here at the end, these are just some extra things, right? Make sure it's your work. Um, make sure it's well organized, not just bulleted answers. You want this to be a paragraph paper, right? It should be answering the questions, but it should read like a paper. Um, specific values, right? You want to quantify. So these are just things to remind you that you're actually, uh, you know, hitting all of your um, information. Do hit spell check before you're done. Now, in order to do this, you need information. So at the very bottom of the back of the sheet, this is the information you're going to use to actually do your project. These are the numbers you're going to be plugging into Excel in order to complete this item, right? Here are the weights. Here are the, are the scores. After you complete section nine in the packet, you'll have a better understanding of how this weighted grade uh, dealio works. So after section nine, that's when it's a good time to start the project and think about how do you do weighted averages by hand? You're just going to basically do it then in Excel, letting Excel do the math for you. That's why we use Excel references. All right, so that's kind of your basic run through of project one. Uh, we will take more questions in class, but I kind of wanted to give you uh, an overview. Um, and if you have other questions, you can always email me uh, or ask in class, open lab, any of the other available times. All right, thanks everybody.